Thomas John is a world-renowned psychic whose clientele includes Jennifer Lopez, Julianne Moore, and Courtney Cox. Now you can trace his journey in Dead Serious the Musical, which takes audiences through Thomas's terrifying childhood and learning how to channel his gift to performing on stage as his drag alter ego. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Bunch welcome to celebrity medium Thomas John. Thomas, well, thank you so much for being here. I recognize you from your little stint on The Real Housewives in New York City okay. when you advised Sonia Morgan. But you're the great Sonia Morgan. When you're starring in Dead Serious Musical on January 11th and January 12th, can you tell us about the show? Well, it's a musical about my life, and it's really um, kind of takes you through the process of what it's like to um, be a psychic and the things that I've gone through and sort of how I got to where I am now. So, Yeah. But how did the show come about? Well, um, actually, one of my really good friends, Michelle Wendt, is a writer and uh, producer and stuff. And we were, she had actually done a musical that I had gone and seen about stand up comedians, where she had stand up comedians in a musical. It's called Ha the Musical. And we just became friends. It was sort of a long story. But, anyways, we became friends. And one time we were just talking and about different things. And she said, You know, I think you should talk about you know, these parts of your story because, um, you know, I, I feel like in my genre of being a psychic mm -hmm. that people talk about a certain path and it's all like light and love and spiritual. But, you know, there's other sides to things too, the downsides of it, the, the, you, know, the you know, when you're growing up and you're in a town where nobody really understands you. So um, we w I wanted to do something that kind of showed this whole part of things and stuff. And so we just kind of started to conceptualize it and it just, we thought it would be fun to, have this way of telling this story that's a little bit unique. Yeah. And what can, what can people expect when they come to the show? Can they expect to meet a ghost, or is it just a really fun time? <laughs> also, is it a comedy? Is it yeah. dra drama? Um, there's parts of it that are funny, okay. and then there are parts of it that are dramatic. I also do do live readings in the show that's wow. totally real. It's not, wow. you know, so we make it very clear that I'm going to do a block of readings. So um, it's just like if you came to one of my events, I yeah. do like 30 minutes of readings in the show. So um, it's very possible if you come that you may get a reading. Um, and I wanted to do that um, because we just thought it was important if we're going to do a musical about and say, oh, yeah, he talks to dead people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I should do that. So um, we're, we do that. And um, we just talk about my childhood, um, going to college, things I've gone through, how I came to understand my gift, things like that. Yeah. And you're also on another show in Connecticut on January 13th called An Evening with Spirit. Right. right? You're a busy guy. You tell us about that show, too. That's just kind of, I mean, not to describe, I mean, that's just all readings. It's uh -huh. just my normal event that I do, and I'm really excited to be there. And um, it's a great, great venue, Ridgeville Playhouse. And that just, yeah, if people are just interested and, you know, they want to just come and have a reading, you know, that's a, that's a place to come for that. Great. Yeah. Um, I'm really fascinated by the readings. When did you realize you, you had a gift? Well, that is kind of a long story um, because I always feel like it happened in stages because when I was four years old, I started to see spirits and ghosts and, um, well, spirits, loved ones, um, people that I didn't know who they were would kind of would visit me hmm. and they would be for like family members or, you know, my grandfather started to visit me that I never met. So... That's definitely when I started to recognize. The problem is, is nobody ever sat down and said, oh, by the way, you know, you're a medium. You know, people have this gift. My family, you know, my mom was like, oh, my God, call the priest, you know. Right. Oh, my God, you have to go to a therapist, you know. I mean, it wasn't like nobody ever used that word. Actually, it wasn't probably until I was about maybe 19 or 20 years old that I ever even read a book about mm -hmm. psychics or mediums and ever said, oh, well, that's weird, like, that's kind of, I mean, I, I you know, it, it's, so I, I knew there was something different about me. I mean, quite honestly, I, I kind of sometimes equate it to like being gay mm -hmm. is, which is that I, I knew something was different about me, but I, nobody ever sat down and told me about that. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was 18, I mean, it would, my life would have been easier if my, you know, that had happened, but my mom didn't know about that stuff. My dad didn't know. I mean, I grew up in a town called Plainville, Mass., so you can mm -hmm. imagine it was how riveting it was. <laughs> <to live there. laughs> Plainville. So, <laughs> nobody knew about psychics. So. It was kind of like in stages. And then I, I had to learn that, well, 
maybe I can, you know, use this to help other people. And then I wanted to be able to control it and not have to be like picking up on people all the time. So that was like another. So it definitely was like stages of coming into it rather than just like a moment where I woke up one day and said, oh, yeah, I think I am a, you know, a psychic. I should <laughs> talk to my guidance counselor about that. Or right. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is it like for you when you are having like a psychic reading? I mean, I'm just tuned in energetically to somebody, so I guess it's sort of similar to, I'm just more aware of somebody's energy, people around them, their aura, things like that. Um, so, I mean, it's not, I mean, I might have different physiological feelings, like sometimes if somebody past comes through, I can sometimes feel how they went to the other side, things like that. Mm. So, um, but it, it's not, you know, usually I will close my eyes. I might go into a little bit of what I would call like a trance, but it's, it's not really like much different from me just being, you know, sitting here now. Yeah, that's so fascinating. Yeah. Oh, you. you have a lot of um, celebrity clients. Mm -hmm. What uh, types of people, though, in general come to you for reading? Oh, all sorts of people. I mean, I've worked with people that are... Um, uh, you know, doctors. I've worked with people that have, a lot of people that have lost children um, will come to have a reading because they want closure or answers. Um, I work with really everybody. I mean, you know, anybody who's open to having a reading. I mean, I've worked with people that, I mean, I, I work with actually not a lot of celebrities. I mean, I do have celebrity clients, but um, I don't work, you know, it's like probably more regular people actually. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, it, that's probably actually, to be quite frank, it's probably my preference more, mm -hmm. you know, just regular people and stuff. Um, so I, you know, there's no sort of, I mean, the moral of the story is, is I offer what I do and people sort of, see, you know, they seek me out. I, I don't, it's not like I'm yeah. going on people's doorstep saying like, oh, you want a reading? You know, so Whoever comes to me, I feel like spirit has sent me them. They're supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare. Like people will ask, do you ever have naysayers or skeptics? I mean, I, I do in probably in the world, but those people really don't come to see me because they wouldn't, you know, they're not going to come. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned you can kind of now kind of control the experience, mm -hmm. but where's the strangest place you've been where a spirit was just like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, probably one time I was on a date, actually. Oh, no. Yeah, it was a few, several years ago. But, um, and then a couple of other times, like I, one time I was like at a Starbucks or a coffee place or something, and somebody came through, and I, I felt like I should give this message. I, actually, there's a couple of um, stories in the musical, actually, about me connecting with somebody in like a weird situation. Yeah. So um, I think those, those things, in, and whenever that happens, I always have to take a moment and be like, okay, is this person like, am I gonna scare them? Mm -hmm. I, I need to tell them what I do. Are they gonna be okay with that? Um, yeah, I would find yeah. that really yeah. terrifying. If you came up to me <laughs> in a coffee shop and were like, your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but is it hard then to be in a place like New York City or even like in a room like this where we have 30 people, do you feel energies or are you able to kind of focus in on the moment? Yeah, I mean, I guess also in, in to your point also that because this is how I was truly, I feel born, you know, it's, it's not like, and not to, but I know like some mediums and psychics, which is a great way too, like they had this realization later in life where they sort of went, you know, they took classes to develop it. So I don't really know any, like if I woke up one day and I didn't see dead people, I'd be like, oh my God, something's wrong. So I, I it's just part of my life. So I, it's like, I almost don't even really think about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you ask me that question, I, it's like, I guess energetically, yeah, when I am in certain places like concerts or, but, you know, yeah, I do maybe, but it's like, I'm just not even really, it's just part of my who I am. I don't yeah. even think about it. That's you know? fascinating. Wow, do spirits at concert, like, at concerts rock out? Are they enjoying <laughs> the show? Or are they just like, can you help me out? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, spirits, they, they, the, the spirits of, of, of people, you know, they will often talk about enjoying things that they still, I mean, I had a funny reading a few weeks ago Actually, it might have been a few, it's a few months ago now, but with this woman, and she wanted to connect with her grandma, and she was like, what is my grandmother doing over there? Like, what, you know, because <laughs> she wanted to know that. She was, like, sort of freaked out, like, where's my grandmother? Is she just, like, hanging around? And I said, well, she she gets to do the things that she loves. Like, she wants to go to Walmart a lot. What? And, and this woman's like, oh, yeah, my grandmother went to, like, Walmart three times a day and would, like, buy things. Yes. <laughs> so. Wow, good to know. I'll be hanging out at Petco, like, hanging out with cats, being like, I will adopt you. <laughs> I'll be at Target, like, nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm also curious, I know that you can predict things Mm -hmm. future things, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. 2019, how's it looking? 
Well, I just did this actually, this whole class um, for, for people on my newsletter about the, so I've been thinking a lot about predictions. You know, um, 2019 will definitely be a year of, um, the best way I can say it without sound, the best way I can say it Muller, is this, Muller, 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 uh, Muller. <laughs> people are, pe things that have felt stagnant, like a lot of people have felt the last couple years, like, oh, I feel like these big changes are coming, then it's like they don't really manifest. Yeah. This is the year, really, of manifestation. So mm. it's, um, in numerology, it's a three-year, um, which is a very sort of adventurous, expansive year. So you're going to notice just things happening, a lot of synchronicities. You know, if you, there's been people that, like, you've been waiting to meet or you want to get a new, you know, this is a good year for, like, stuff to actually happen. Okay. So if there is something like a political thing that's been stalled out, it could, you know, um, which way that goes or whatever, but that, that it could go, it could go, it could at least, the, the answer will be given, you know? All right. Ooh, so, I have to that. ask, so if for, when you go to a reading, is there anything that you recommend people do to get the most out of it? And mm -hmm. is there anything that you would recommend they don't ask? Well, um, you know, I would say when you go to a psychic or a medium that you should go with an open mind. Um, actually spend some time thinking even about who you'd like to connect with, because mm -hmm. that's important. Um, I would say don't ask lots and lots of questions at mm -hmm. first. Um, there are people that I that I have actually go for readings that now because I trust them, they, I feel like they're trusted people. Like I'm a little bit more, but you shouldn't go to a medium and say, you know, I want to talk to my grandmother. She passed of a heart attack when she was 85. You know, you don't want to give a lot of information only because it's not like any sort of, but you know, that actually impedes the process. And the psychic, you know, they, we, we, the medium or psychic, you want to really make sure that they're allowed to bring through who they're, mm -hmm. who they're getting a message from, rather than you putting your own thoughts into who should come through. So I would say that um, if you can take notes or, or if, you, if you're allowed to record it, because a lot of times you can listen back on things mm -hmm. and things will make more sense. So, um, but yeah, and, and also going with realistic expectations that, you know, it's not going to be like sitting across from your loved one and having like a full conversation. I mean, you're going to get insight, awareness, validations. You know, they're going to bring through memories, special mm -hmm. things. But, it, it, you know, you, you have to kind of connect the dots a little bit. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. so cool. One more thing. You also have a, a TV show, right? Yeah. Seatbelt Psychic on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. What has been your most interesting passenger on, on the show? Probably if you, uh, if, if one of the episodes where there was the pastor, there was like a pastor that got uh -huh. in the car and he was like totally like what is going on because we didn't produce any of that. It was right. all real, real people getting into a car thinking they were being driven somewhere. And so this guy was like totally freaked out that I was talking <laughs> to people and stuff. And um, it was good. He, I mean, he, his, he was so tough to read, it kind of like blocked the reading a little bit, but there was definitely like his wife came through. Wow. wow. And it was very, like a very, like I said, oh, there's a woman that you were married to that had breast cancer. And he's like, yeah, my wife died of breast cancer. So they kind of couldn't, you know, at that point, he couldn't really say it wasn't real. Wow, wow, you are a busy guy talking to ghosts, talk, spirits, talking to humans, <laughs> TV shows, shows. Thomas, thank you so much for joining Thanks us. For